When reviewing these three cards, I frequently ended up using phrases like feel free to trade the excess tremor for better graphics or there is enough headroom to bump up the visual settings. This first video of the series aimed to explore how these cards would perform if we do go for the better visuals. The advice mentioned of trading excess frame rates for better visuals makes more sense in single player titles rather than competitive online multiplayer games. To be more accurate, we'll attempt to find a specific settings preset, and in some cases a specific resolution, where the game experience is still enjoyable. To me this means 30 fps or higher for the 1% lows, and 45 fps or above for the average in single player, with one exception and I'll highlight it when you come to it. But before we go into the games we selected, let's quickly go through the cards that we'll be testing. The Sapphire Reference Design R929DX. At 290 watts TDP, this one is the closest I have for a hair dryer. The AVG FTW Plus ACX 2.0 Plus. Jesus, who comes with that name? GTX 970 built on the same 28nm process as the 290X, but delivering the same performance at half the TDP. And the Sapphire Mini ITX version of the RX 570 built on a 14nm process, having the same performance and TDP as the GTX 970. And yes, we used the same C230 workstation to test these, with the same 4th gen Core i7 equivalent Xeon, and 32GB DDR3 RAM running at 1600MHz in dual channel. Ok, gaming time. We start off with Control. This game was one of the first to make use of RTX, yet I played it and tested it at the lowest possible settings, and this can be seen in the graphics fidelity. Pushing the settings to high, we have the GTX missing on both the target average and the 1% loss by 13 and 4 FPS respectively. The r 9 x provided a weird behavior with some areas not rendering properly or rendering quite late. I'm not sure if this is the GPU starting to give up or the drivers. To add to that, the card got 0 FPS for the 1% loss. At least in control, r 9 x stutter is your name. As for the RX 570, the behavior was similar within 970, with the card reaching only 35 FPS for the average and 25 for the 1% lows. At medium settings, the game still looks fine, screen space reflections are still there, albeit at a lower fidelity. The GTX 970 raises above both required targets with an average FPS of 50 and the 1% lows of 42. The game plays quite well. The r 9 x clears only the average FPS, at 51. The 1% loss, however, missed the 30 FPS mark by just 1. This does not make the 290X a bad card, the game feels fine, but there is little performance in reserve. The RX 570 averaged 47 FPS and the 1% loss ran at around 33. Better than the r 9 x but still not quite the GTX 970. To conclude on control, play the game at 1080 medium when using one of the cars tested. Time to change the indoors for the outdoors. While spending some time outside is generally good advice, I'd avoid touching grass in Fallout 4 if I were you. It may end up giving you radiation poisoning. What is safe however is to attempt pushing the graphical settings to high or ultra. As you can see on the screen right now, there is a marked difference when dropping from the high settings preset to medium. So, starting out at ultra settings, the GTX 970 will provide an acceptable single player experience, averaging 50 FPS while overlooking Diamond City. The 1% loss FPS of 42 is also quite adequate. The r 9 x also clears the bar, averaging 46 FPS with the 1% loss metrics of 40. Not as good as the 970, but still a good experience. As for the RX 570, it averaged 47 FPS with the 1% loss at 40. Basically the same performance as the 290X. If you do want a bit more performance, you can drop the settings to high. There is little drop in visuals and the FPS improves a bit for the R9290X which now averages 2 FPS higher and the 1% loss increases by 1. The GTX 970 performs largely the same as it did at ultra settings and the RX 570 improved by a paltry 2 FPS for both average and 1% lows. No point in going lower than high settings. All cars run the game fine at Ultra and the visuals degrade significantly when dropping to medium. This leaves high and ultra as recommended presets and considering that there is little performance benefits from dropping to high, I will play this game at Ultra. 
I mentioned an exception to the 30fps for the 1% lows type of standard that I would use to call a game playable or not. That exception is Doom Eternal and its older brother, Doom 2016. These games are supposed to be played at 60fps, so we'll raise the bar here, and we'll require our cars to run at above 60fps for the 1% lows. Doom Eternal, however, will make it difficult to test all possible settings presets. The highest preset I was allowed to select for the GTX 970 was high, due to the amount of VRAM available. Same warnings were raised for the R9290X and the RX 570. The GTX 970 averaged 83 FPS and the 1% lows was 63, making the game run smooth enough to shift the blame for the game over screens to the player. The R9290X performed a bit better than the Maxwell card, averaging 86 FPS and providing 1% lows of 67. The RX 570 surprisingly performed somewhat worse, at least for the 1% lows that reached just shy of 60 FPS. The average of 86 is just fine, but those 1% lows. While the data for the medium preset does indicate an increase of performance, my suggestion when playing the game with any of the cards tested is to start with high settings and drop to medium only if needed. Adding the average FPS for all games at the highest preset tested brings us the graphs in on screen right now that hints that all three cards perform about the same. The sum of the 1% lows however paints another picture and while not clearly pointing out the best card, it did highlight the 290 x as the more problematic one. There are however a few more games to be tested, but that's for the following videos. Make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out. So, to be continued. As for this one, we're done. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked it and I'll see you for the...